Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to a very special video. It has been such a long journey, I can't even tell you. I think it's been over two years at this point, but today I'm finally ready to tell you all about my brand new houseplant fertilizer. We have an awful lot to get through. There are so many things to show you. So let's just get straight into it and not waste any time at all. I want to start by saying this has been so long in the making and a lot of you may or may not know that this has been delayed quite significantly. The delays have either been due to safety regulations, packaging, distribution, you name it, we have had delays on it, but I'm finally ready to launch it today. So I haven't really just created a fertilizer. That's not really what I was going for. I've actually created a whole brand and the fertilizer will just be the start of that brand. My new brand is going to represent a whole line of products relating to plant care. So not houseplants themselves, but essentially anything to do with houseplants. There are already one or two products that I've actually been developing along with this fertilizer that you're going to hear about today. And I cannot wait, cannot wait to show you those in the future they are in the works, they are on their way. But I honestly thought it wouldn't be right to start this brand without just the fertilizer first. I just feel like it's like the core flagship product of the brand. So that's why we've started with the fertilizer first. But trust me when I say there are other really, really, really cool things coming further down the line. So I wanted to create not just a fertilizer, I wanted to create something that was a little bit more general purpose for aroids. Now it doesn't just work on aroids, I will say that, I will get into that a little bit later, but I wanted to create something a little bit more generalized because quite honestly, that's how I treat my plant care here. They all get general care. So I wasn't gonna make a product that was really much different from that. I wanted it to be adaptable to how you personally grow your houseplants and I wanted to get as much added benefits in there as humanly possible and trust me it turns out that's actually very very difficult but we got them in there guys we finally after two years we got them in there so the brand I have created to represent this future line of products is named Nurture System And the whole focus really is just that. It is a system that I'm creating that allows you to care for your plants. The clue is really in the name. I've kept it pretty simple. You know me, the rare plant shop is what it says on the tin. Why would this be any different? So I've been working, I have the product in my hand, I've been working on this for so long. <laughs> Literally, the amount of time this has taken pains me, it really does. But I, I actually can't believe I have it in my hands because we've been working to package this up and everything else for weeks now. I'm sat really in front of several pallets of this stuff, just waiting, just waiting to go out the door. So I've pulled one off the pallet and I have one in my hand unpackaged. I'm gonna show you it now. So I'm so proud and so delighted to introduce to you my brand new fertilizer, which is Power Grow. So this is Power Grow by Nurture System and I will take you through the packaging really quick, but you might see a giant number one there. Now, I wanna tell you a little bit about this packaging anyway, because I've gone back and forth on this all the time. And hopefully through expansion, this packaging will stay the same. It's going to be a little bit of a test to see how this performs. But I wanted to design a product that was sort of, it's really hard to explain. I've been inspired by things such as hair care, sports nutrition, that kind of thing, which should make a lot of sense if you know sort of the things I like doing in my free time, right? Because I'm very into the gym, I love my hair care, and all the rest. So this is kind of where this vibe comes from. It's, there is sort of, how do I put it? You can see it, there's a, there's a vibe here between the Rare Plant Shop, which is the t-shirt I have on now, and this sort of thing. It's very, very similar. It speaks to it. They speak to each other. This is just a little bit more science based. So this is the packaging. This is a 500 milliliter pouch. We have Nurture System here and we have the number one. If anybody is familiar with hair products such as Olaplex, I use that all the time. That was a little bit of my inspiration for these products. Not only that, but if anyone does know, I am formerly a software engineer and we tend to keep things pretty simple when we name things. And I just thought this was so in line with that. I just had to go for it. So we have here, and I will probably show this to you a little bit closer. We have have nurture system down here we have number one and then over here it actually tells you the name of the product and this product here it says number one power grow adaptive nutrient concentrate because 
this product you can use both with Lekka and with essentially nearly any other kind of mix, whether it be stuff like pawn, whether it just be whatever custom soil mix you have, maybe in a bit of moss, whatever you want to do. This you can completely customize and it will adapt. Essentially, all you need to do is change the concentration, but that is covered on the back. So I needn't go into that just yet. It has a load of benefits, which I will get to in a moment, but it is basically designed for all things aroid. I haven't been able to test it on every aroid known to man, but you get the idea. It's been tested on the plants in here and it works beautifully. So essentially it's going to work for anthurium, alocasia, monstera, philodendron, epipremnum, syngonium, blah, 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 blah. It works for all of those really, really, really well. So you use this at full concentration for a G Lekka or a hydroponic mix. You use it at half concentration for soil. And you can even use this, guys. You can even use this as a foliar feed for an even lower concentration. Again, it's all covered on the back, so you don't need to remember what I'm saying if you choose to buy this. It's all covered on the back in the instructions. But I absolutely love that because when I'm, basically when I'm taking care of my plants in here, I do not have time. I do not have time to use loads of different fertilizers or loads of different things on all of these plants. What I created need to just sort of work. I am more than happy to pick up the same fertilizer, change the concentration, whether I want to have a foliar feed or I need to water something I've randomly left in soil or I'm going to do something with all of my lecker pots, which to be honest is most of the shop. So I'm really, really happy with how versatile this is. It's just so, so flexible. To help with essentially nearly any potting media that you're using, but definitely with Lekka. I've actually added a wetting agent so that when you do use this in with water and you're feeding your plants, it should help keep the Lekka a little bit wetter for longer. Clue is in the name. It is literally a wetting agent. I've had great success with that. And to be honest, even when I've spilt a little bit of fertilizer, it doesn't dry quite as quickly as what you'd expect in here. If I dribble a little bit somewhere, it's really, really good. I've genuinely found that makes a really big difference when feeding Lekka. Less so, obviously, I've noticed with soil because the very nature of it, it's going to stay a little bit wetter anyway. But with hydroponic media, 100% noticed a difference. I've added other things like fulvic acid, humic acid. This essentially supports nutrient uptake, so that's really, really helpful. It's what you want in fertilizer, just a little bit of a catalyst, if you will. I've also added a bunch of B vitamins in here that help reduce stress on your plant. That could be something like repotting. It could be bringing in an import. It could even just be something as simple as bringing a plant home from a garden center, and it's going to have a little bit of a wobble because it's come to your conditions, which arguably should be better than the garden center but it helps with stuff like that. It helps reduce stress, just helps the plant have less of a moment, you should say. It helps with acclimation quite a bit. Sometimes when you add fertilizer to plants a little bit too early, it's it, it can either go one way or the other, I find. Sometimes I've added it to imports and I've maybe added it a little bit early and I don't think the plants appreciated it. I haven't had any problems with this, personally, and your plant has a really nice acclimation process. I have noticed leaves drop a lot less. That's something I've 100% noticed. I get less yellow leaves than what I used to. We also have, and this is something that not everybody might know, I'm not really sure, but a lot of the time, specifically with anthurium, a lot of growers have to add added calcium and magnesium to their regular, call it fertilizer routine, right? I noticed this and I wanted to have this already in there. I still needed to make sure it worked for all of the other, you know, plants like philodendron and things like that, that it wouldn't negatively affect them. As a result, there is a much more increased level of calcium and magnesium in this product, which should negate the need to supplement your plants, especially anthurium, because if you don't, by the way, that's what can get quite pale looking velvety anthurium. And if you've got pale looking velvety anthurium at home, that could be why. You may need a little bit more calcium and magnesium. This has it in as extra. So you really don't need to buy extra CalMag, which CalMag, by the way, is usually what people refer to it as. So if you see CalMag online, it's essentially calcium and magnesium. So as I've mentioned, this is formulated with more specifically aroids in mind, but I need to tell you that I do use this at home on my regular houseplants. And some of you may or may not know, they're not aroids at all. I have areca palms, I have cast iron plants. What else do I have? I have calathea in there. I'm using it on those and literally it's just like they were fed normally. There's no adverse effects that I've seen at all. It just seems to just work on everything, which is great because that's kind of what I wanted. So I just want to show you this from the front, by the way, just so you can actually properly see it. So this is what you will receive when you buy this product. I also have for you, it just sort of sits on top, but it might have come loose in the, the mailing box. But I have a little cap that has a five mil, can you see this? 
five mil fill line and I've packed them like this. It's not designed to sit on the top, it's just how we placed it into the mailboxes, just in case anybody's thinking, oh my God, the caps come loose. It hasn't, it just sits on the top. And that is so that you could administer your dose. I will get into the dosages near the end because I have like a, a kind of FAQ about it. So I wanna cover that in a little bit just to fit it in there because it makes more sense. You'll see what I mean. But that's what you get. This is the back of the packaging, like such, all the safety information and everything else. We will cover some of this later on. But for now, for now, I just want to detract from the packaging a little bit and just pop this down. And I want to talk about a little experiment. A few of you may know what I'm talking about. So last year I performed an experiment. I actually did one much earlier than that. So let's rewind, let's rewind a second. This fertilizer has been in development for around about two years, right? In that time, we've tried a couple of different formulas. I think more of it was actually the concentration rather than the formula. It turns out it's very hard to get added benefits in with other chemicals and everything else because all the chemicals compete and then you have to make sure the formula's safe and it changes the, the dilution rate and everything. It's a whole, it's a it's a whole thing, guys. But anyway, during this time, obviously we're testing out slightly different formulas, slightly different concentrations. At one point, the color of this changed because this isn't actually a clear fertilizer, by the way. It is like a, you know, like a rust chocolate brown color. It's not clear. So at some point or another, we did, it wasn't even an experiment. We just plucked out a few different types of plants in the unit and just put them in a box with our fertilizer and we took the leading competitor and basically plopped it in another box with a few plants. The same plants in each, but we didn't really document it or anything like that. This was just a, oh, let's just see how it compares kind of thing. Very, very casual. And I'm not sure if I still have the pictures, Ben might, and if, if, uh, if we find them, I'll pop them in. But it's not actually the experiment I wanna talk about. But anyway, we got the results of that, the results, and we were so shocked. I think Ben sent them to me one day and was so shocked I didn't think it was real. I actually did not think it was real. I know, stay with me, stay with me. Did not think it was real. So I said, look, we need to be sure because I can't just use this when we didn't really think about things. We just stuffed plants in a tray and then fed things and just waited to see what happened, right? So we're like, right, okay, let's do this again. So we did, we did a sort of experiment basically to see how my fertilizer, Power Grow, compared with the leading competitor, and we essentially used a control as well, which was just water. So there was a, a bucket of plants that got no feed, a bucket of plants that got the competitor's feed at their recommended dosage, and a bucket of plants that got our feed. And we waited and we had a little look, and we waited for, I believe it was three months, and we witnessed the results. But I have to show you this because I want to show you that it works, okay? And anything I'm about to show you, by the way, is already on the Nurture System website, which I will put here, but it will be linked below as well if you wanna see that. All of the photos I'm going to show you are on that website, completely unedited, just as they are. So if you want to see something longer or you want to see a specific thing, they will be in there. I'm not gonna show you the 50 odd photographs I took, if that makes sense. I'm going to just pop them up on the website and you can have a look. This experiment is also written up on that website as well. So if there's something that you feel I haven't explained or you wanna go and read it for yourself, Again, the link is right here. So I've got a copy of the plants that we picked. And I don't really think there was any specific reason. We didn't want to overthink it. We did pick some of the, the obvious winners from the, the sort of not experiment. And we picked some ones that we hadn't tested before. Obviously, why not? So the plants that we chose to compare, remember, one of each plant, one is ours, one is the competitors, one is water. And the list of plants that we picked are as follows. We had Philodendron gloriosum. We had Philodendron florida ghost. We had Philodendron plowmanii. We had Syngonium pink splash. We had Syngonium aurea. We had Monstera Thai constellation, Monstera Escalito or Escalito. We had Anthurium mudinum. We had Anthurium crystallinum and Epipremnum marble. Those are the plants that we chose. We basically put these plants into a container. We actually kept them in the same spots in the container so you could really reference it quite easily when you put the three containers next to each other. It just became really easy to see the difference. You didn't have to sort of look at one container and work out where the plant was from another container. But we did that and we tagged them all up. This is very important. We had all of the tags in my feed, which was NSPG, which is Nurture System Power Grow. In the other container, we had competitor. And in the other container, we had 
control. So every single plant picked in advance had a tag. I did do my best to make sure that the plant mass and the size of it and everything else was all the same. When there was ever in any doubt, I made sure that I got the smallest plant, if there was any doubt at all, because obviously I can't necessarily pick absolute clones every time. That's just not really what it is. So I did use the smallest of the, the three for myself, not even the control. I used the smallest for me. If there was any doubt where I thought, hey, someone might say you've got a slightly bigger plant, I made sure that mine was the smallest, 100%. Whether that be like roots, leaves, whatever it was. Sometimes even variegation. I believe in the case of the Syngonium aurea, mine was more variegated, I think. And I kept that because I knew obviously that the plant would have less chlorophyll in it and less ability to grow. So I actually kept the higher variegates for me as well, just to make sure that there was like, I don't want to say no doubt, but there was a really, really good opportunity for the competitor and the control to do anything to outperform whatever we want to call it. So we essentially flushed the plants and we refed round about every three weeks or so for about 12 to 14 weeks. It was quite a while. And I think they got left after that, maybe for another month or so without anything at all. So they just got left, left to do their own thing, just to make sure that once the feed had been sort of in there, used up, no adverse effects were happening. And at the end of the experiment, we took photos of the plants still in their trays, just as was. So the photo that you're seeing now is literally as they were the day that we decided to have a look at these, photograph them, unpot them, everything, okay? So you will see on this photograph there are some yellow leaves. I deliberately left them on because I think it's important to see leaf death and how the plant is using the nutrients, right? Because that does give you an indication of what is going on. So any debris or anything like that from any of the plants, it was never ever removed. It was always kept on. And that was very, very important to me. So that's what you will be seeing there. And you should be seeing on the photograph. And this is the way that any photograph I give you is going to run. On the far left, you will have NSPG, that's Nurture System Power Grow. You will then have the competitor in the middle, and then you should have the control on the right. So I guess the main differences you're looking for are, you know, near the middle and near Nurture System, but you can look at the whole thing just for a little bit of a barometer. So the thing that I see on this photo the most, quite honestly, open to interpretation, but the darkest plants generally are the Nurture System Power Grow ones. And before you say anything, these plants were on these shelves, the exact same spots and everything else. They got the same light conditions. They got the same temperature fluctuations. If there was a dry spot in the shop, they all got it, right? Every plant in this shop got it. The care is absolutely no different for any of them. They were sat just up here, actually, because that's the nicest spot in the shop with the best light essentially is where I keep all my high value stuff under here, mainly because there's a skylight above it. So they were sat here the whole time. But I do see that the power grow plants are a lot darker and the leaves definitely do look bigger. I don't think that's me just saying it here on camera. I do think they do. There is fewer dead lower leaves as well. I can see that from the photographs. And I want to point this out as well because I put a photograph of this a while ago on Instagram, I think, and the amount of crap, let's just say, I got from other shops, the usual, you know, other shops, other people that make fertilizer, whatever have you, basically saying that I rigged it and the competitive feed didn't I didn't put any feed in it. But honestly, if you actually look at these photographs, there is a clear difference between the competitor feed and the control. And I think in some cases it's really obvious. I'm pretty sure the Epipremnum specifically, there's a huge difference. So the competitor feed Epipremnum is about twice or three times the size of the control. Same goes for some other plants as well. I haven't got all of the photos in front of me now, but there is definitely, definitely a difference. And the more you look between, like take mine out of it, and the more you look between the competitor and the control, you will see a difference. Even the Gloriosum is bigger. I don't think it was much bigger, but it was definitely, definitely bigger. There's definitely been a difference, that's for sure. I think the Florida Ghost as well was definitely better by a long way. Nearly everything in that tray looks a lot better than the control. I think the off-putting thing is the fact that my tray is, it's, it's a lot different, shall we just say. Now then, some of you might be getting ready to type, hey, 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 you could have pulled a fast one here because where's all the before pictures? Where's all the before pictures? How do I know that you didn't just give everyone else less roots? So you picked a little plant that looks about the same, but really there's big differences beneath the soil. And I take your point. And I planned for that because I knew someone would say this and I knew someone would accuse me of rigging it. So what I've done is every single plant I picked I took pictures of them next to each other on these before photos. Every single plant had 
a starting photograph. And every single plant, when in doubt, I took the smaller root mass, if there was any doubt at all. I genuinely gave myself, if there was ever a worse head start to have, I gave myself that. So you needn't come at me talking about the roots because there they all are, they're all documented. Not only that, guys, but of course I depotted these plants. They're not just shown in pots like this. For example, this is Gloriosum. It looks hella amazing. Again, mine is on the left. The control, uh, sorry, the competitor is in the middle. The controller's on the right. You can see that for yourself, but you're probably thinking, ah, but what about the root? Well, of course, of course, guys, I depotted them because you can't just look at the top of what's going on on the soil. You have to look underneath. This is an experiment after all. So I did take pictures of those roots as well, and you can see them there. And again, every single one of these photographs that I'm sort of discussing today, they're all on the website. You will find every single one there, and you'll be able to see for yourself the differences. Because in some cases, the differences were a little bit weird, actually, and I'm going to get into that in just a sec. But as I said before, here is the Gloriosum looking amazing. Here is the Esqueleto or the Esqueleto, also humongous difference. Here is also a Thai constellation, Monstera Thai constellation. Big, 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 big differences in all of these plants. Big, big differences. To the point where I just, I, I look at it myself and I'm like, no, <laughs> no, literally no. But it is what it is. I don't doubt that other people aren't going to try this. So th there wouldn't be any point me pulling a fast one, would there be, really? So the one I actually want to talk about a little bit, because I thought this was quite interesting, because in a lot of cases, my plants didn't necessarily have the bigger root mass. Some of them did. I think the Monstera went a bit nuts, actually, with the mixture, and there was definitely more root growth. I think that's kind of Monstera for you, to be honest. But in a lot of cases, my root mass wasn't quite the same. It was a little bit less in some cases. So I want to talk about the Syngonium Pink Splash just very quickly, because this is, this is proof that I've been feeding them, if anything, guys. This should be solid proof that I've been feeding everything apart from the control. You'll see there that my Syngonium Pink Splash on the left does not look the same as the competitors. Clearly what has happened here is that my fertilizer has been utilized by the plant in a completely different way to the competitor. And in the case of Syngonium, I don't think it's well suited, the competitors that is, to Syngonium in this case. Okay, because you can see that the middle syngonium has grown like a really small vine. So it's had an accelerated growth, definitely to the control. The control's not really done much, but it hasn't really used the, the nutrients in the way that what you would hope for, for your syngonium growth. Whereas mine on the far left has done more what you would probably want from that. And I thought that was really interesting. And it is also further pointing out that yes, these plants have been actually fed because I just knew someone would say that I hadn't. I just knew someone would say that I hadn't. Come on guys, it's the internet, right? But yes, yeah, so what I was mentioning before was that not all cases, but my fertilizer has developed a, a bit of a smaller root system than some of the other cases, right? So, the, so than the competitor, for example, than the control. However, also in most cases, my plants were substantially larger. What this actually shows is that the nutrients I'm providing for this plant in my fertilizer in PowerGrow, they're actually being applied correctly to the plant. And whilst the plant does have a bigger root system, it's definitely grown, it's not growing so much so that it's sucking nutrients from the top of the plant. You'll see that, I don't know, Gloriosum, Plamanii, any of them that you want to look at, you will see that the growth up top is super big, super plush, and super healthy. And the root system looks very healthy too. So it just shows that the nutrients are being used in the right way. And it's doing exactly what you'd want a fertilizer to do. Again, you can see all of this on nurturesystem.co.uk. So again, here is the link. There you go. It's also in the description if you need to. But that is the link to the website. Again, literally everything I've just said is essentially written down for you. So I want to now go into... I'm calling it an FAQ, but I think it's things that I feel that you guys would want to ask right? It's just something I feel you guys want to ask. So there's a couple of points here. So what do we have? The first thing, and I have got notes on this because I didn't want to deviate from it. The first thing is the concentration. So I will read out the concentration for you now. The regular concentration for hydroponic is four milliliters to the liter. This is a 500 milliliter pouch. For potting mix or your general arid chunky mix, whatever you've done, that is two milliliters to one liter of water. So that is half concentration. Foliar feed, we have have one milliliter of water. Now, I'm aware that a lot of competitive feeds have a different concentration. 
okay? I'm so aware of this, you have no idea. Because I originally wanted this fertilizer to be one mil a litre, because that just fits into my life really tidily. However, and I will get into this in a moment. Trust me, we will go there. I've been working with my chemist to make this stuff. And essentially, things become very, very dangerous and very, very unstable when you condense it down to one milliliter a liter with the ingredients that I have. This is not me saying that other companies have done this are necessarily having that problem. I don't know what they've put in theirs. Theirs might be fine at one milliliter. The stuff that I wanted to put in here was absolutely not, guys. Honestly, it was quite unsafe. What it also meant was you could so easily do a double concentration of this fertilizer on your plant so, so, so easily. And given that you can probably see from the experiment, and this is why I want to cover it first, you can see how potent it actually is, right? I could not keep this at one milliliter, guys. You would overdose on it real quick. You wouldn't be able to get a half dose. If it is one milliliter, it would now not be versatile, right? Because one milliliter, it's not a lot at all. You try rationing out half a mil, it's not going to be the easiest thing in the world, okay? And then 0.25 mil or anything like that. So I needed to make it as user-friendly as possible, but it also needed to be stable in the packaging. And at one milliliter, it was pretty lethal. <laughs> like, honestly, we had it at one milliliter, the first the first iteration that we had of it. By the time we did that experiment, I've just showed you, we, we ran with this formula here. But I think an earlier iteration of it, possibly even the first experiment, we did not have that. We had it at a much more concentrated amount. So the formula was sort of the same, but it, it wasn't quite the same. And it was just so risky. It was so risky. There is a lot in here. Obviously, there's warning labels on the back and everything else. So you know what's in it. There's no like hidden and weirdness in it but it was very 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 risky and it was absolutely not user friendly and when it gets to a feed if it's not user friendly what is the point i do not want you to put this on your most prized possession and burn the heck out of it because you've accidentally added one mil do you know what I mean? So this was just the best decision going forward. I ummed and aahed over it. Trust me, I ummed and aahed over it. I wanted this to be a mill, but my chemist literally sat me down and said, look, I know what you want. It's a terrible idea. You should really do this. So after a bit of back and forth, we did, and we changed it. So it, all the good things are still in there. We just changed the concentration and reworked it. I can't fully explain to you that process because I'm not the chemist. Okay, nothing in it. I'm not the chemist. I can't fully explain why that works and why it doesn't work. She has a PhD in this stuff. I do not. So I'm not going to try and butcher an explanation there. If you want me to give an explanation on that, I can probably email her and she can write a full on explanation for you as to why that is and why that would be the case. That's absolutely fine. But that is why it is not one milliliter. I think, ooh, I wouldn't want to get that on my hand or anything. Like I really wouldn't with the stuff that's in here. At the end of the day, guys, I had to take the advice of a chemist with a PhD. It is what it is. So this leads nicely on to, did you make this yourself? Who helped you? So by now, I hope you figured out this is not a homebrew feed that I've just made here. I'm just mixing stuff together. I haven't just put a load of stuff in a pot and gone, yay, this works great. Awesome, let's sell it. I also have not white labeled it, drop shipped it, none of the rest. This has completely and utterly been made in collaboration with a company known as Aqualabs. I'm pretty sure they're one of the leading producers of fertilizer for cannabis. I think it's quite big in the Netherlands, but I have worked with them to create this feed. I've worked with their best, best, best chemist, and I'm so proud of what we've come up with. You will see on the back of the packaging, and this is why I said we'll touch on this later, but you'll see on the bottom of the packaging here, we have my company and we have Aqualabs. And I think up here somewhere, can't quite see on camera, where is it, where is it, where is it? It's here. It basically says it's been manufactured in collaboration with Aqualabs. So they have worked with me over the last two years to create this, and we're all very proud of it. And I know that she is very excited, my chemist, to see how this actually goes, because obviously she thinks it's great as well. She worked on this with me. Right, the big one, the big one, the big one. And I, you need to kind of just hear me out on this because this has been, this has been a lot. But the big question that I know you're all screaming at your screens right now is essentially, where does it launch? Where does it launch? Is it UK? Is it EU? Is it US? Is it any of those things? Is it any of those things? The answer is as follows. So at the moment, this is a UK only launch. The reasons are, and I, there's no weird reason, I will literally be upfront with you and tell you the reasons. So the UK has its own regulations, right? The EU, because we're not part of it now, has its own regulations. The USA have their own regulations. 
obviously we've met the UK regulations, no problem. We would meet the EU regulations. That's not really the issue here. The issue here is when you release to the EU, there is a lot of money involved to pay to go through all kinds of registrations and things like that. And it's very, very, very costly. Obviously, this is a new business. This is, this is not something I've got a ton of money to plumb into or anything like that. And all of the profits, and I mean all of the profits from this, will be immediately put back in to get this out to other countries. Literally, that is it. Of course, we will also make more of it but that is what it's for. So the EU has its own associated costs and regulations. And I do believe at some point or other, we will have to put stickers over a, a section of this packaging to comply with that. The US, it is doable. And there's absolutely plans to get it into the US as quickly as humanly possible. Of course, that does depend on the success of this. As of recording this video, I don't know how well it's going to do. Do you know what I mean? I don't know how well it's going to do. But it is so costly to get it into the US. It is done on a state by state basis. So we have to pay quite a bit of money per state to get this to comply with that state's regulations. And that's probably a shit ton more of stickers. There might be a packaging change at some point. I can't really, I can't really foresee that at the minute because I don't have the info because we're just not there yet. This isn't something that I could just release all over the world straight away. Uh, perhaps maybe if I was like some kind of massive YouTube with like millions of following and there was, there was a ton, a ton of capital there to start up, then we could probably do that. Do you know what I mean? But that's just not really how this can go. So the, the fastest this gets there to all of you will genuinely depend on how this goes, basically, if you guys like it. So it will currently release to the UK, but believe me when I say that priority number one is to get this to all of you as best as I can. That does include the EU, that does include the US, that does include, no doubt, many other places as well. But I please ask you to be really, really patient, follow along with its progress. Maybe if you've got people that you watch in the UK or, or friends in the UK or whatever, feel free to follow how it goes, whatever you like. Obviously, I'll still be using it in my videos. I'll talk about it here and there, but it needs to get there. We need to get there and we will get there as quick as we possibly can. And I thank you so much for your understanding on that. But believe me, guys, when I say we're getting it to you. The last thing I want to talk about is distribution. So welcome to the basically the number one delay of this product over the past two months. I've been, I wouldn't say cagey, but I've been a little bit mysterious on camera and I've just said, look, there's been delays, there's been delays, there's been delays. So this is not a product I intend to distribute myself from this facility, should we say, from this unit. This was always going to be done by another company. And for whatever reason, because it's a hazardous liquid, I'm having a lot of back and forth with regulations, with forms being filled out correctly, with boxes being ticked correctly, and it's been delayed. And right now it's still in review. So we're going to launch without for this first run just to get this out the door. This should have been out the door months ago. And the reason it hasn't really irritates me. But we were going to use Amazon for distribution initially. I think we can look into other forms after that. This will not be distributed by Amazon right now. This is distributed by me. I'm just telling you in the future, that's something that will probably happen. So what I'm going to say is the link to buy this product is in the description of this video, which you've probably already seen if you've been clicking for, for example, the website. But at some point that might change to as an Amazon link. Okay. The reason for that, and I know I've had a lot of, you know, a lot of, uh, opinions, should we say, on things such as Amazon in the past. But again, guys, this is not, it's not sustainable distributing these at volume. It's just not. There's only two of us here. We have to run a shop. You know, Ben has even another job as well. It's just not sustainable. And we knew that going into this business, right? We didn't want to do something that we couldn't sustain the expansion of. And there's no way that we can sustain the launch to the EU and everything else without that. So for now, until that gets approved and we get to have that link live, we will be distributing it from here. I anticipate, to be honest, within the next seven days, it should be approved anyway. So if you're watching this a little bit late, that link might be an Amazon link by now. I don't really know. You can, there will also be a link to this on the website as well, but it will probably funnel you to that. At the moment, if you watch this when it goes live, it's probably going to funnel you back to my shop for this and then you can buy it that way. Uh, it, US shipping and everything obviously will be shut off for this. So if you think you can sort of get around that, unfortunately, we can't do that, guys. It wouldn't be legal to send this to you. We just can't do that. I'd have more luck sending a plan to you without a fight than sending this to you. Do you know what I mean? 
But I think that covers pretty much everything. Again, this is not the only product as indicated by a little number one. This is going to be the first of a few. There's no real timeline for them to come out because obviously we have to balance launching this in other countries with the second product. We will see. It might be, and I have a feeling that it is, my second product is something that I can send overseas a little bit easier. So I will sort of juggle that around, but my main goal is to get this expanded and get this to you guys, everyone that wants it, that is. So if you want to comment your country and be like, yeah, please, you know, send it here, that would actually be really helpful for me in the comments because I will be able to see the ratio of where you're all at and where you'd want it sent to, and it might help me prioritize things a little bit as well. That would be really helpful, actually, so if you could do that, that'd be great. Until then, I think that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. I want to thank all of you for sticking by me, of course, because without you, I couldn't even do things like this. This is wild because the company Aqualabs actually approached me in 2020 in COVID time and I've been working with them ever since. So thanks to you guys, I've even been able to make this. And you know me, I don't like making something if it doesn't work. I'm not about that. So I'm so proud of this. I really hope you love it too. I really think you will. I really think you will. I love this stuff. So if you want to buy it, the link is down below. If you don't, absolutely fine. Thank you for watching. I know you're probably curious to see what's going on. That's absolutely fine. Thank you for being here. So with that, I'm going to love you and leave you guys. The product is live right now. You can get it in the link below. Assuming that is my website, <laughs> it's literally touch and go at this point because if we get proved last minute, then it'll be Amazon. So whatever the link is, that's where you can get it from, guys. Thank you so much for everything you do for me. Thank you for all your support. I really hope you like this. I'm going to go now. Have a great weekend and I will see you in the next video, guys. Bye.